Hey guys, I'm in Dublin, Ohio today, and this is my buddy Leatherlips. Whoa. He, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's an art installation there. That's kind of neat. Anyway, I'm giving a talk at the Columbus Pass user group tonight about JSON, and I figured, hey, why not film my video while I'm here in Columbus? Let me set this down somewhere where there's less wind. All right, that's a little bit better. So today I want to talk about SQL injection and typically people think of it, oh, it's when you're passing in, you know, some kind of unsanitized input parameter directly into your query. Uh, you know, that's when SQL injection happens. The thing is, though, you don't always need to pass in, you know, a user input directly into the query at runtime. So here's what I'm talking about. If you have, let's say, a web app where you are letting the user define the sort order of uh, the default report, maybe, let's say, that you're displaying. Right? It's a user preference and you want to save that default sort order for them in the database. You might let them you know, pick in a drop down menu, you know, okay, which column do you want to be sorted first in ascending order, descending order, uh, right, so on and so forth. The normal user is going to submit that form, save their preferences, and then when they go view the report, everything's going to look great. What then happens later on is we have a stored procedure that's actually generating the report and sorting our data, and it's, it's using dynamic SQL. Uh, because we have to to sort it by that user's preference. We're actually we're saving the user's preference as some JSON in the database, and then we're parsing that JSON, putting it dynamically into our order by statement, so that the results are returned in the user's preferred order. Now, the problem that happens with this, right, is you might be looking at this query and saying, "Oh, great, the data is coming from our database." There's no SQL injection vulnerability, even though we're using dynamic SQL, right? Because we're not having a direct user input into this query, we're good to go. And that's not true, right? So the thing you need to be aware of is a SQL injection attack happens with dynamic SQL, and it doesn't need that user's parameter immediately, immediately at runtime. It could be coming from somewhere else, like a saved result in the database. For example, if the user somehow is able to type in their own value for that stored order by preference. And I don't want to get into the details of how they can do that, but if the developer who built the website isn't, you know, binding the, the parameter values that are coming in, they're not validating them, they're not checking them for uh, unwanted results or unexpected results, it is very possible that a user will actually manipulate the value that we're storing into our database so that it looks something like this, something that is an injection risk. And in this case, we're actually our injection attack is not going to be one where we're actually showing the data immediately uh, because we can't easily do that in an order by statement, but we're going to inject a second SQL statement to run. In this case, it'll be an insert. What then happens is when our report query actually executes, it's going to grab that value from the database, parse the JSON out, dynamically append it to the end of our order by, and now our execute statement is going to be executing two separate SQL statements. In that case, our query was compromised, and even though the user can't immediately see uh, the results of that second query, right, we're not outputting it to the report or anything like that, the second time they go and run that report, they'll see all the new data that they couldn't see before, right, and now our malicious user has, I don't know, other tables in our database or whatever. So that's it, right? It's a common misconception that you need to have the, the user's parameter directly input to your dynamic SQL query in order to have a SQL injection attack. That's definitely not the case. Uh, anywhere you have unsanitized user input, including, you know, ones that are stored from the database from previous, you know, if someone submitted user preferences or it could be a comment that they submitted to the database or, you know, anything else, if you're query is using those values and they're unvalidated, they're unsanitized, and they're being executed dynamically in SQL Server, you're potentially vulnerable to SQL injection. So thanks for tuning in again this week. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next week. Let's say bye to our friend Leatherlips. Bye-bye, Leatherlips. All right, so long. Mm -hmm.